first thing that we do need to do here is let's just draw the floor first off and then over here we can just uh, go like this and now I can just copy this line for 60 uh, centimeters so we can do that while holding the M key and also with the control key this is 60 centimeters let's do 60 on this side as well I want to take this woman off or I mean it's a kitchen so it, it's it's in the right place no I'm just kidding now this will be a height of 90 centimeters those I will go 90 centimeters upwards and then 90 centimeters upwards once again this is the point where it needs to connect move it upwards all the way to the ceiling let's just draw another line on this side now with the rectangle tool I uh, will just draw the other cabinets over here we'll do all the divisions and all of that just a little bit later on so this is completely fine as of now and then uh, these are kind of flush and these are going to be a little bit inwards so what we need to do here is i will just do uh, something like this for this one let me try these are not square so it's probably 60 by or 70 by 60 yeah 70 by 60 let's push pull them all the way to the end there draw the line upwards once again and now we're going to move on with the rest so let's just select this 70 by 60 once again push pull this all the way back here and now this is going to be probably something like 80 obviously i'm eyeballing a lot of these i know we can match the picture to the sketch of modeling and all that there's some features but uh, i do not want to do that this would be 30 by 80 and then we can just push pull this all the way to the end it would be the same thing over here 80 by 30 and then push pull this all the way to the end just like this and now we will divide all of these cabinets by 60 between each one of them so let's select this one this one will be selected like this we'll go 60 but we'll keep it on kind of parallel lines so let's just draw 60 like this and then we can copy it for about uh, 1.5 centimeters now let's just do on the middle copy it for 60 and then 3x now they're all divided equally and i will go and do the same thing underneath here so let's just draw this This will be pushed upwards for about as i said maybe 87 now we will offset this once again so something like this we'll move this upwards that way it is in level with a countertop do the same thing here and we'll delete all these lines that way it is all the same surface when we're modeling we do have some spotlights there and then we will also have some lighting coming on for this side so let me just draw this line move this upwards about a few centimeters let's scroll down just for a tiny bit this one can work i do like this one so maybe let's just load this one and see how how it will look like in the render uh we will have to keep one on that side uh this this is just way too high let's just move this downwards and then let's just uh go and rotate this all the way let's try and find the center of this with a q key we can rotate select the center of the chair and then we can just copy these all along so something like this and then for this one also like this uh, see how this will look with only three chairs because i think something like this can work better than what we had there move this a little bit more onto the side and now we can uh, push pull this a bit upwards and we can just add a window real quick so uh, pendant lighting see how this one would fit in Maybe this one can work as well. I'm not sure how to even search for that on the 3D warehouse. Okay, so let's just move this upwards first and then we can see how we can utilize all of this. Okay, so let's just start doing a little bit of the materials now. Let's first try to find the flooring. Uh, we do have some flooring that is similar here in the Enscape material library. So we can just, let me check what kind of flooring this is. Uh, this one is kind of close to it. Let me see if we have something else that might be close to it. Uh, let's just use this one. Let's change its orientation. This has to be in like this 45 degrees and a lot larger uh, so this is how it looks like as of now it's very very bad but we will see how much it will be improved later on because i do have a bit of tricks under my sleeve to actually make this a lot better so let's go here in the composition let's see how we can set up the whole composition we're going to go to custom and now in this one last time we had i mean in the exterior render we had an aspect ratio of 16 by 9 but on this one, it will be more so maybe a one by one or not even one by one. It will more be a 0 0.9 aspect ratio. 
first things first, as I said, I did set up the composition and I did click the save frame tool. Basically what the save frame tool is that whatever aspect ratio you have chosen here at output, it will be shown on the Enscape window as well. As you can see, now we do have the aspect ratio of 0.9 in the Enscape window. And then in the field of view, we can just leave it somewhere around 50 and then just do the rendering quality up to ultra. And now what we can do is we're going to go ahead in the view management, just like with the other render that we did. We can just uh, place the camera somewhere here and we can just click create view, let's type in view one and 0 0.9, just to kind of know what kind of aspect ratio we have for this. This is more useful when you have many different scenes from many different camera angles, you can kind of know which one is which in terms of what kind of aspect ratio you're looking for. Uh, right now, let's also apply another wood material to the chairs and to the table as well. Wood, and I will scroll down to something like this. I believe this will, will work well. So wood 16, I will apply it onto the table. Uh, let me see the orientation of the textures on this one. It's quite similar to this. And then I will do the same on the chairs, I mean chair legs. I'm not happy with the color of the wood flooring. Uh, I'm, I want to make sure that I, I actually improve that later on, so uh, let me just check. Okay, so this is not bad. Let me see how I can improve this wood flooring. So let me just turn off the saturation just a tiny bit. This might be better and also we will be able to see all of these later on when we actually do apply the lighting as well. So anyway. Let's try and apply a plaster material on the ceiling and these walls as well. So let's go to plaster, maybe plaster 06. Let's just see how this one would work. I do have it selected, but I also want it a lot uh, more onto the white, not that gray. So I will apply it over here on this wall, on this wall, on all the surfaces as well as on the ceiling surface. Let me go on the settings. So over here at the color, I think we can match this easier sleeve it like this. Now, I'm not sure why the divisions are not showing up though. A lot of people do ask me about how we can create currents and the issue with currents is that if you try to create currents just by turning off the opacity or just trying to make them more transparent, it's basically not going to work because as you can see, if I just lower the transparency, it doesn't even look like a current anymore. It just looks kind of, I'm not even sure what kind of material we can call that. But in order to improve currents, we would need to use this part of the material editor. So if I just select it and I scroll down, you can see this transparency and we would need to use a cutout. So basically where we would find this cutout is you can uh, pretty easily just go on, uh, let's say Google and we can just type in curtain transparency map. So if you search that in and if you go to images, you can find this one, which is basically from the Enscape forum. And once you have this, you can just download this over here at the cutout, wherever you save that, you can will find that pretty easily and then we can import it. And as you can see now, it does have transparency on uh, the white or black parts, whichever one you prefer, you can use this invert key to change it. But this doesn't look realistic yet because we do need to transform the whole dimensions of the map. So I'm gonna do 0 0.5 or 0 0.4 by 0 0.4. So 0 0.02 by 0 0.02. This is a bit closer to what we're looking for. And then one thing that will definitely make this a lot better, some people prefer to use foliage to let the light come through. I myself like to use self-illuminated. Okay, so let's open Enscape, we can launch it and then I can show you how I set up the whole lighting. Let's make the beam angle as much as possible. I will turn on the intensity as well of the light. Something like this can work all right, even though I do not like uh, this rough part of the plaster. Let's just leave it like this and then we can also balance it a little bit with the other uh, visual settings. Maybe I even change its orientation. So if I just scroll in and with a move tool, uh, I can just use the QQ from this side to this side. And a lot of people are especially surprised by the effect that the HRI can have on interior renders as well. Because the materials on the interior can reflect a lot of what the HRI consists of in terms of colors. So keep that in mind. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done here with the image settings. The auto contrast, we do need a bit of that. Saturation a little bit higher or maybe even a bit lower. Even the color temperature needs to be a bit colder, I believe. We do need to have some warm lighting going on over here and then on the backsplash as well. We do need to add quite a few elements, but it's completely fine. Now let's just make the whole length like this, turn on the intensity quite a bit. You can change the color that the Enscape lighting emits just by applying a material or a color on top of it. So 
Let's try to keep this just a tiny bit more balanced. I'm gonna go and turn on the brightness of the HRI a bit too. Uh, so this is much better in terms of lighting. I can already tell. We just now need to apply some materials and the accessories and it will be much, much better. Uh, so for example, if you want this lighting over here to be more warm, I will go to select colors. Let's just scroll upwards. Uh, we use this color over here and then we can just apply it. Just use another line light and put it here on the backsplash. Let's rotate it, move it upwards, and let's just see how this looks. Turn on the length. Well, we also need to add fabric material on the chairs. So I will go here on the material library and I will go to fabrics. Let's just find some type of white fabric. Let's just try this one. And I know it looks kind of gray right now, but we can change that in the editor. And let's just select this. So I'm gonna go ahead in the asset library here, the fastest way to apply accessories in any type of render that is done with Enscape. So I will scroll down and I will go and do this bowl of apples here in the dining table. I will rotate it, something like this. Let's try and find an anthracite sink. It doesn't fit with these, but let's just move it like this. So I'm gonna type in wood floor. I can select this one. Okay, now as you can see, I do believe it has a metallic option turned on and we do not need a metallic option for this flooring. This needs to be at zero. We can leave it at that. Now over here in this section, I don't believe we have imported any type of, I, I do like this flooring a lot better though. So it definitely was worth it to search for another floor. Hopefully you found this lesson in terms of the kitchen helpful. Mm -hmm.